everybody. This is Elena Mazzana. This is Mind Over Matter podcast. And today I have a special guest, Todd Jason, who is a personal growth expert and a founder of Man from Man organization. So hello. Hello, Elena. How are you? Good to be um, here. Mind Over Matter. That sounds good. Good to be here too. So, well, first of all, I'm going to say that you and I, we actually know each other. We've met before. And um, the way I came across you again was on YouTube. I decided to do this podcast um, literally and officially about a month and a half ago. And I was like, let me just refresh my, you know, my, my knowledge on spiral dynamics because I'm really fascinated by this developmental model. So I went online, just, you know, put in the keywords and you came up and I'm like, oh, this guy has some sort of very uh, short explanation. And I think it was like in 15 minutes. Yes. And um, so I started uh, listening and I'm like, it's just, it looks so familiar, but that's okay. So I, I continued listening and then I'm like, let me add him on Facebook. I, I, I think I want to like talk to this guy. I like how passionate he is. I'm like, I, I totally resonate with that. So I went on Facebook, looked up your name. I'm like, we're friends. That's interesting. And I'm like, oh yes, I think I met him 10 years ago. So I mm-hmm. texted you and yeah. then we started talking. So that's it well here we are so it all worked out exactly yeah so where so that was 10 years ago where were you then as yourself as a man and where are you now what's the what is the difference wow i mean that, that's that's kind of a that's kind of a big question so so particularly as a man you're wanting to know like because i am running this organization called man for men where i'm doing trainings yes. for men you know when i met you um we were both working on applications and meditation i believe yeah a project yeah. called amplifield you were working on some stuff um i think it was a coaching platform i can't remember exactly what it, it was loud but... alpha mind oh, i started thinking about it developing and finally i have something now but yeah and and so we were we were talked about that you didn't have your man for man yet right i don't think so no i did not i mean i was i was working <clears throat> primarily i've been working in the spiritual development space personal growth space for 20 years believe it or not i've been doing this for a long time and I've done a lot of different things in my career, uh, you know, along the way. Maybe when I met you, uh, we had just finished doing this course with Ken Wilber, you know, who's the creator of Integral Theory. I had spent a year and a half working with Ken personally. And when did I you inter- meet him? When did you meet him the first time? Um, 2000, 2009, maybe. 2000. And so, <laughs> and I met you back, I believe like 2010-ish, 11, maybe. Mm-hmm. I had no idea, nothing about Spiral Dynamics or Ken Wilber then. You already knew about him. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And if you told me then anything about him, it would not have resonated with me. See, everybody has their own timing Mm -hmm. for spiral dynamics. That's right. You know, for for everything, I guess. For for everything. And spiral dynamics is cool. I mean, it's one part. Spiral dynamics is not Ken's term. It's it's a framework that has been developed by others, you know, and then Ken uses spiral dynamics or a version of it in his integral theory, which is in his words, kind of a broader explanation of kind of how we evolve, how we grow. But spiral yeah. dynamics and, and the whole levels of development definitely is something that is really cool to me. And, um, you know, honored that I had the chance to interview him for 100 hours, went to his I know. I heard that in your 15-minute uh, YouTube video. Well, to me, spiral dynamics is, like, like we'll, we'll start talking about it now. I, I came across spiral dynamics two years ago, actually, somebody mentioned to me, somebody who's in, you know, doing men's work and, and they were visiting us, uh, you know, um, there are actually a couple, they do couples workshops. So my husband and I went to their workshop right when, after we got married. So in 2016, 17, and we did this workshop. Um, then we became friends with the couple and their, and, and the, the the husband of a wife who was leading the workshop, he mentioned to me, do you know Spiral Dynamics? literally two, two and a half years ago, I'm like, I think it's interesting. I feel it in my body right now. I, I, I'm going to be gravitating towards it. I want to research. So as I started researching about it, everything started just making sense to me. I'm like, this is it. I've been looking for it. And I almost felt like I had life before and after spiral dynamics. It's almost like when you do ayahuasca, it's like, okay, before and after. Mm. And, and spiral dynamics was that to me, you know, because mm-hmm. it just, opened me up and made so much sense to me about 
you know, Russia, America, me as a woman, where I was, even where, where I was 10 years ago, when you and I met, that wasn't a, a certain growth in my, my own, you know, woman, woman growth, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure you can understand. Um, and, and where I am right now, you know, so it, it really totally made me see uh, and understand the, the development in a different way, individually, socially, culturally, and, um, and it also gave me sort of like a roadmap. So I, and, and when you were talking about spiral, dyna- spiral dynamics, I felt like you were just like, totally understanding it and, and really just you were so excited by it. And yes, we want to tell our audience, it's not the only model. It's one of many models. And you're right, Ken Wilbur is one of those one of the people who took it further in in developing integral life. I want to ask you how, just curious how you found out about spiral dynamics. What was the day for you? How did you learn about it? um, I mean, again, I've been been doing this kind of work for a very long time. So I I, um, probably first heard of the term 20 years ago. You know, there was a... uh, um, an organization um, called Enlighten Next, um, and mm. their founder, uh, kind of a controversial figure, um, I forgot his name right now. That's what happens when you get older, you forget people's names. <laughs> yeah. uh, a- Andrew something, I can't remember his name, but he's kind of like a big figure. And they had a magazine, they actually had a physical magazine called Enlighten Next or Enlighten mm. Now. They changed the name a couple of times, but, and that magazine, you know, this is in the early 2000s, you know, like, you know, they would have, he, so he was, in the integral world, in the spiral dynamics world. Um, and they would publish these conversations between him and Ken Wilber, you know, cause he would interview oh. him all the time. And I had, I was reading this, like, what the F are these people talking? About? I mean, I didn't understand one cause it got very deep and technical, but yeah. I knew that there was like, oh, well, I'm gonna understand this one day, you know, like I'll, uh, you know, this is, this is the stuff that I'm into, you know, I'll understand this one day. So that was probably my first, introduction into the term and to Ken and, and and it was through this magazine it was a physical magazine this was mm. before the internet was a big thing this was probably in 2001 yeah uh, and, and so I started reading that magazine so that's kind of when I first heard the term mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and when did you go deep into it where you actually saw the the levels and you started understanding yeah. the value systems and then you saw yourself on that spiral dynamics well that wasn't until later because so what happened was i eventually in 2010 moved to california and i started working for a company i helped launch a company called evolving wisdom and one of the it's a husband and wife that founded that company and um craig hamilton was the main editor had been the main editor of that magazine i just mentioned enlighten next so he was part of this organization Mm -hmm. enlighten next so he knew, you know, he, he's a spiritual teacher. So he, he's been around for a long time. And I started working for Craig and his wife, Claire, launching this company. And, you know, Craig launched his own brand called Integral Enlightenment. Uh, and so I started to get to know more of it then. And, and what happened was one of the, one of my brothers in this company, uh, a gentleman named Ryan Parks, still one of my best friends, <coughs> uh, he was Ken Wilber's personal assistant for a long time uh, in Colorado. And then he was working with me. We were living in a house together and we started talking more about Mm. integral theory and spiral dynamics. I started to learn more about it. What ended up happening was Ryan approached me. He's like, would you want to do a course with Ken? Like, you know, maybe me and you and someone else, like I could approach him on it. I think you would be an ideal person to interview him because you don't know everything, but you're really good at interviewing and asking questions. And so- and so basically we approached Ken and I had already met Ken. I'd already interviewed him once, but, and then we approached Ken and, and Ken was like, yes, uh, let's do it. And so- And you didn't know that much about spiral dynamics, right? I didn't. I mean, the, the, that's, that's why- That's interesting how you approached, you, you, you met him without knowing it, right? It's so cool. Well, I think that was the value of the course right. was that I was coming in understanding something, but just curious. And I really approached him of like, okay, like you have this theory and it's very complicated. And a lot of people think it's very heady and, Mm. you know, let's make it practical. Like, I'm going to ask you questions from the standpoint of, I don't know much. I'm this guy, I'm living this life. Here are my situations. So that way other people could listen to it and not just try to understand the cognitive or intellectual structure of the theory, but like, how does it help your life? Like, so how does knowing this help me? How long ago was that? Um, maybe 2013 or so 13 okay so okay got it so so you meet Ken Wilbur is it it's in California or where is it well so we ended up 
going to his loft in Colorado and interviewing him on three different occasions. So the first week was interesting. It was like the first week we went and then we came back a month later for another week. And then I think we did a third trip like to get the whole course. And we created this course called the Superhuman Operating System. So uh, and- you helped create that course. Yes, there was there was four of us, including Ken. There was me. That's Ryan. amazing. I heard about it. So you're one of the creators. I had no idea. Well, it's, it's me and Ken. You know, yeah, so yeah. it's me. It's that's me interviewing so cool. him. Yeah, that's the course. You were actually a famous, famous person, and I I met you. I didn't know you you'd be so famous. Now I'm just realizing you're one of those people. That is so <laughs> freaking awesome. So you 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 were actually yeah I've heard about that course. So you were one of the people to help to help him put it together. Mm-hmm. That's pretty fascinating. So let's let's tell our audience. I want to go into that course and talk about that and man for man and masculine and feminine. But let's let's explain to our audience because some people are tuning in and not fully understanding what's going on and what spiral dynamics. How can we explain it? Not in fifteen minutes, but like literally in like a minute or two. How how would you oh, explain yeah. spiral well, dynamics? Look- well, I, it's a system of understanding how we grow, you know, and so there's these different levels or stages of development and you can look at it in our own lives. You know, when we're born, you know, I have a, a child, she's three and a half. She has a different, thank you. She has a different state of consciousness than I do because I'm 48 years old. Right. And so you can see that, you know, when you're born, you know, you have like these, these needs of just eating, surviving, you have to be taken care of as a human. And then you start to get older and she entered into a different stage now where she has some self-awareness. <coughs> And she has her own ideas and her own communication style. And then we evolve. And, and what Spiral Dynamics is, it's an attempt to actually map, you know, the way that we grow, like as individuals, right? So yeah. you can actually, and it does it through these very kind of like neat looking color schemes. You know, you might see these mm-hmm. spirals and these different I color like schemes. I like that they use colors, not numbers, because it kind of makes you feel like you're not, you know, lower <clears throat> than others you know yeah and and it isn't because you know each time you you get to a different stage you transcend and include the previous stage it just means that you don't completely change you have the same awareness you're just actually having a new perspective on life and so you grow and we're always growing you know through these stages and that's what spirals dynamics is but the most interesting part of it is that it's not just a map of how we grow as individuals but it's also like just from a common sense perspective, but really the scientific and anthropological sense, it's how we've grown as a culture. So you can look at the last 2000 years of human history and you can actually look at our history also going through these same stages. And that was the part that was most mind blowing to me. And the way that Ken and I kind of got to it in our course was that, well, of course, our culture goes through the same stages as we do as individuals, because our culture is just a collective version of us. So it has to go through the same stages. And that was a really mind blowing thing for me to understand was that these levels of development, these, these kind of ways that we grow through these colors and the schematic is not just an individual map, a collective map. And there's a lot, then there's a lot of meaning in that, you know, when you can start to understand that. And it just kind of like makes you just a little more humble in the fact that, you know, as humans, life can be hard. We're challenged in all these different ways, but we can almost relax into this fact that, you know what, there actually is a path. There is a mechanism for how we grow and we can understand these frameworks and these maps. You know what? This is going to be totally natural. I have to ask somebody to be quiet. Just one second, okay? Sure. sure. <coughs> Thank you. I'm actually in a club room where I am. I live in California right now. So you know how in California I have those complexes. So sure. this is a club room and they were doing something. So I have to ask yeah, them. No so yes, um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a um, model that helps, that helps us understand how we grow individually. Like you talked about your daughter. Uh, she's three. I have a two, almost three-year-old daughter too. She's oh, going cool. to be three in September. Yeah. What's your, what's her name? Her name is Adelina. What's your daughter's name? Uh, uh, India, India Rose. In, India Rose. That's a beautiful name. So you have just one daughter? Yes. Just one kid? Mm-hmm. I have another one. She's uh, nine months old. Oh, wow. You've been busy. <laughs> yeah, well, and, what's her, and what's her name? Vanessa. Vanessa. Beautiful. It's amazing, right? How parenting changes you. Yeah, it does. I mean, that's where you really see this because you can talk about this stuff all day long. And a lot of people like to talk about this stuff all day long, but. Fatherhood you... changes you tremendously. Yeah. We can talk about that, but let's come back to the model. So it's, it's individually. <laughs> um, and, and then you see how growth happens culturally and socially. Like I told earlier, how this was such an enlightenment for me because it gave me an understanding of 
you know, the, the culture and America and Russia particularly, and because I am also, I'm also interested in, I'm in personal growth and I'm interested with in, you know, I'm involved with women issues. I made a film, as you may remember about women in 2010, Russian women in New York. I was fascinated with the stereotypes of Russian women back then and wanted to understand how, why, and when they developed. And so to me, it, Spartan Dynamics gave me this sort of roadmap, understanding myself, where I came from Russia, where it was after the Soviet Union broke, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then coming to America and being sort of hypnotized in a sense by the capitalistic orange meme in Spartan Dynamics Orange, the capitalistic, you know, the achievement, individual being, you know, in, an individual thinking about me, my survival, my success, my thriving, it's all good, as, as you've explained, it's being included as you move forward, right, and it's being, you know, all, you know, becomes part of you, but if it's just that, then it's obviously not totally healthy when it's just focused just me, 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 so, and I, I could see where I may have been, particularly because Russia wasn't like that, Soviet Union wasn't like that, Soviet Union was the blue meme, where it's actually, the, it's the community, but it's the, you know, we're all the same, we're all, uh, you know, there's no private sector, no, 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 no inter entrepreneurship, none of that. And we're, people were suppressed. So coming to America, wow, there's so much opportunity, but you don't want to get too opportunistic either, you know? So, <clears throat> especially uh, as a woman. So that was interesting for me to understand Russian women sort of uh, values and, and be in it and witnessing a lot of things that were, that were happening. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that was the, the nature of my film. Um, so this is, this is where Spiral Dynamics came really hel helpful and knowing where you're going into the green meme where you are, it's not just about you, it's about your community. It is about um, what you do for the world, what you do for the community and how, how helpful you can be, right? Your listening improves, obviously, your communication skill improves, you begin, you begin to care about the other more authentically, more genuinely, right? Would you, would you, would you like see, see that? Like going from orange to, to green, this is what kind of happens? Yeah, well, the, 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 so, you know, our, our orange, the way that Ken teaches it, um, and look, you know, there, <clears throat> these colors and these levels have always existed, but how it comes through humanity can be seen, you know, on a, a, a very measurable cultural scale, historical narrative, right? So while there's been many people that have been enlightened through the ages, when we talk about the emergence of orange on a global level, it really happened in the end of the 1600s, beginning of the 1700s, which kind of also was a time of great strife. You had the, uh, you know, the, a lot of revolutions, the French Revolution, the American Revolution. It was the birth of democracy. Mm, yep. the, the end of slavery, as Ken calls it, although slavery certainly hasn't ended on this planet, but in a lot of ways, like we started to see that slavery doesn't make any sense. It was the birth of capitalism mm -hmm. and the birth of the industrial revolution, where each level that comes into play in a collective level comes in to solve the problems of the previous level, right? So the previous level, one of the ways to look at it, this blue level, as you mentioned, um, was dominated by the church, dominated by religion, uh, which had God or like this institution of religion and church as the main way by which we gravitated. So when democracy and capitalism came, you know, that previous level had kind of run its course, you know, was yeah. having, causing some more challenges than progress. And, and then so there's actually, cultural war. That, that, and what happens is war, like yeah. the, this, this new idea needs to squeeze out of it. And that was, you know, this massive revolution, the, art, the birth of the global mm -hmm. orange meme which yeah. then came on board and did a lot of great things in the world, science, technology, yeah. all the things that we know was birthed, you know, hundreds of years ago. And, and it's been running, you know, the yeah. engine, you know, the money system, the financial systems, the globalization really is all in the orange meme. And, and what happened, the birth of green, while again, there's came, been came later though, then, right? I would say green, when did we would just say the birth of green came in America? So in the 1960s, I mean, so there were remnants of it before, but in the 1960s, you know, like there was a fam famous book called Silent Spring um, by Rachel something. It's a very famous book. I can't remember. And a lot of people looked at that as the start of the green movement. And really in that book, it was the first public writing where somebody said, hey, wait, what are we doing to this planet? Like mm, we yeah. cannot continue to destroy 
like our trees and our culture and our oceans. Like, it was just waking up, on? waking up. Yeah. It was, a, it was, a, it was a, a, the awareness of like, wait a minute, we have all this technology, we have all this stuff running, we use all this gasoline and this, oh, but wait, what is it doing to our world? And yeah. believe it or not, it's very hard for us talking now in 2021, where this is just so common knowledge, at least the question, whether you believe it or not, you know, that we're harming the world or not, people have different beliefs, but the question, the inquiry wasn't a big thing. So if you were alive in the 1940s, no one was thinking about it this way. No one was thinking about the effect that we're having on the forest yeah. or the oceans or it, like- It was literally like wake, waking up, you know? It's, well, it's you know, each, each new level yeah. is an experience of waking up. So this book comes out and then, you know, it spawns this whole new level where people are like, yeah, wait, what are we doing? And then all the science comes and say, wait, look what's going on in the rainforest. This is going on in the ocean. You know, look what's going on here. And then, you know, in America, you know, the, the Vietnam War was, was also happening. And, you know, it was an awakening of like, why are we going to kill people in another country? Why are we doing that? What is this yeah. notion of war? It was the first time that the question of war and sending young boys for the most part to another land to kill people. It just doesn't make sense. Government, it didn't make yeah. sense. And so this, this was the birth of green on a more global level. You know. In America, would you say just, on, it started in America. Would you say that? Because in Russia, I don't, I don't see it still happening. It may be because we, we're such a globalized society, for instance, right? And, and young people are kind of the same, whether they're in Russia and in India or America, and they're, they're all exchanging memes now through internet. But, right. but all, all together, I don't quite see Russia all like in its own social cultural level thinking about those issues. It's a really good question, you know, and, and again, I, I don't think I'm really qualified yeah. to answer that. Um, like in terms of when I talk Where about it started. Green, yeah, becoming globalized, like did it start in America? I mean, you're talking about movements that are happening in human consciousness. Yeah. So even though you might not see outward expressions you know, the way that Ken talks about these levels and one of the most interesting things that I found from him and the reason why I wanted to get in touch with him is that he said something that when these new levels emerge mm -hmm. and they hit 10% of the global population, yeah. then there's a tipping point in consciousness where mm -hmm. most of the people then very quickly will start to adapt these new values. So even though you might look at Russia as a country that is not adopting you know, from a political or social standpoint, green values, well, neither is America, you know, but it doesn't mean that the people themselves don't have the awareness about what we're doing to this planet. Like we're talking about families at home, kids, like, you know, like yeah. we're not talking, you know, the, the issue you might be representing is the difference between the representation we have politically or socially or economically, as opposed to like the 7 billion people on this planet and how we're all feeling on the inside, it's a little different. So uh, we, there's still more institutions here in America, um, organizations, groups, sure. organizations than there would be, let's say, in, in Russia. Russia, like I know, I know you're not qualified to talk about this, but just a few more, few more words on it. Uh, Russia is, I, to my, you know, from my perspective, is copying very quickly and a lot. It, it's, it's, you know, they have, a, uh, they like to copy what's Western. And then, so all these Western new ideas, you know, diversity, Me Too movement, it started here, even Me Too movement, I believe it's, it's a green, green meme from, from, from start, starts in the green, green meme. And um, it started here, it would never have started in Russia, ever, ever, you know, they're actually were laughing at it, laughing at it, you know? So that's just, sure. and again, to me. yeah. Yeah, again, I, I get it. I have no idea. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I, yeah, I, yeah, I just yeah. can't speak to it. I just don't. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. It's okay. So let's, we're talking about spiral dynamics and where we are in our development. And uh, you are a founder of Man for Man. It's an organization. And how long have you been doing this? So the reason why I started this company and I, I started it a little bit in 2018, but I didn't really start it until about a year ago, right at the start of the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason why I, I, I've been doing this is that, you know, in all my years of working in the development space um, with great people like Ken Wilber, Eckhart Tolle, Tony Robbins, I mean, you name it, I've worked with a lot of the biggest teachers in the world. Mm -hmm. The curriculum that I've helped develop have reached probably over 10 million people, okay, in the last 20 years. And I'd say 95% of those people have been women. Uh, you know, which is great, you know, that really? most of, yeah, I would say that most of, well, 
especially for the first 15 years. Okay. You know, I'm talking up until 2015, there was very few men that are seeking out there growth, development, spirituality. It's, mm -hmm. it's more common now. This is another big shift. I mean, we're in 2021 now. Certainly, there are millions of men meditating on these, you know, mindfulness applications. There are a lot of people now doing stuff. Um, but that was different. I started to see a shift in around 2015, 2016. And so what I wanted to do was create an environment and a platform that could really service the unique needs of men, because it is different, uh, you know, being a man in this world. And, you know, one of the reasons why I started was there was a famous quote that the Dalai Lama said in 2009. And what he said was, he said, the world will be saved by the Western woman. And when he said it, it was like this big uproar, but especially among all the green women, like, yes, you know, we need to have this feminine shift in the world. We need to have more femininity. Masculinity has like had its way and has like caused the mess of things. And, you know, we just need to change things at a very foundational level. And look, I agree with that. There's, you know, th that there's a lot of truth in that. And I'm not against that at all. But that quote by the Dalai Lama, who, I mean, I, I couldn't have more respect for a human being than this man, you know, I mean, there's such love and grace emanating from him. But it bothered me and it bothered me good for you thanks for telling this thanks for sharing this and being confident about this yeah and, and the reason why it bothered me um and i didn't realize it for for years but like in 2015 i'm like why does that bother me so much mm -hmm. and it bothered me because it was like well what about men like has, has the yeah. world given up on men like are we are we just destructive negative creatures that just want to make money just want to destroy things don't really care or be or be or be nasty to women you know it's, yeah like cool. a lot of things you know like yeah. even the me too movement again amazing but like so much of it especially for like privileged white men like me i mean forget mm -hmm. about it you know like we are the evil of the world and and i'm not saying there isn't truth there there is but the question that i started to pose was is there another narrative like is there goodness in men is there greatness in mm -hmm. men is there mm -hmm. something more that isn't being revealed and when i started doing this work the answer was a resounding yes, because when I get guys into my programs, you know, it's actually the most phenomenal thing I've ever seen in all my years of doing this work, because guys at their core are actually pretty awesome. Once they kind of put their hand up and say, you know what? Oh, yes, use some they help. are. We know that. I could use For some sure. help. You know, I could actually use a community. I could use something. It's actually pretty remarkable, like what happens for us, you know, as men, as male creatures, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, have certain qualities and values. And so we are instigating a very real shift in narrative around what it means to be a man in the world, what the term masculinity means. Yeah. And we don't do it in the way that I was doing it, working with all these kind of teachers that were reaching men and women. Like the way that we do it as men is different. It's got to be very direct. It's got to be outcome focused. It's got to be very real. And it's yeah. got to be fast and intense, you know? And that's the way that, that we develop it. It's almost like if you look at what works for men, I mean, military, right? Boot camp mm -hmm. training, sports, you know, like the, the things that we gravitate towards, if we're going to take that and, and, and play with it in a development context and actually attract brothers, men to yeah. actually do some work on themselves, it has to be done in a way that actually matches what their interests are and like the way that they want to flow through a process. So that's what's very unique around it. The way I almost look at our work is very much like, like almost like coming to a sporting event, almost coming to, you know, yeah. a boot camp. You know, almost coming to something where you're actually saying, you know what, I'd have some issues. I want to work on them and I work, work and I want to work on them fast. And I want to know what my outcomes are going to be. And I want to do it with just other men because I can yeah. feel safe in that environment. It's so, so, so good that you're doing this. Sorry to interrupt you. It's so great you're doing it. And actually, um, it made me think about have you do you know Jeff Soltzman? Um yeah. Mm -hmm. Daily Evolver. He he did this interesting review on Sunday New York Times where there was an article by a feminist. Uh, talking about how we need to teach men how to behave with women, you know, because of the, you know, all this sexual abuses and stuff like that. And um, I, what I liked about Soldsman, he said by the end, why is it all about men? And, you know, the suicide rate is high and all that stuff. Why don't women learn to say no? You know, that's, that's also so important. It's just like, and, and Me Too movement is great. This is, a, these are very sensitive things for us to talk about, obviously, publicly, but me Too movement is great. It was an important movement. I personally believe it, it came out at, at the right time. Um, but the other, there's another layer. And this is why I enjoy helping women and working with women because the, the another layer here is one of the top qualities that women have is forgiveness, okay? So instead of prosecuting men 
okay, maybe there were situations, you know, we understand boy psychology, right? Immaturity. Um, so of prosecuting them and punishing them. Forgiveness is so important if there were such such men, you know, when and if there were such men. And um, but creating the the anger towards them and even some of the things you're saying now i know there are certain certain fem feminist organizations that would be very angry about that you know uh, about the, the, the stuff that you're saying right now about you know helping men because men are they needed this this cry they needed they needed this this help because of the cry they have within themselves and i this is a very interesting and again um a fresh topic and i do believe that like I said, women, it's, it's so important for, 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 well, there's this masculine and, and feminine we're also going to talk about, right? The, the inner masculine and inner, inner feminine, which women also have, um, the masculine and feminine. And I think actually from this book, you probably know this book, right? Right on my desk. Yeah, it's one of the, <laughs> one of the core tenets of my, of my work. Yeah, love this book. It made me understand so much about why boys were mean to me when I was a girl. Mm. Um, in fact, they were so mean to me that I just could not understand. And a few years later, this one mean boy told me, you know, I was in love with you. I'm like, and why are you, why were you pushing me? Why are you so mean to me? Boy psychology, right? So this book it actually explains to you how there is an inner masculine in a woman, okay? And that inner masculine is angry at your masculine within a man. And that inner masculine gets so angry that it wants to dominate it and press it down. And that's, that's, can be, it can be reflective in some women who are very angry, whether they're feminists or not, I'm not going to say it, um, but women who are super angry at men and they want to dominate them and press them and, you know, punish them. In a sense, it could be the masculine working within the angry masculine, right? The, the tyrann tyrannical masculine, which is not a solution to a problem, right? Yeah. Well, I, I got to tell you, I haven't had, you know, what the ways that I define, you know, yes, the work that I'm doing is for men, you know, in the world that we're living in, there's gray areas, you know, and, and the way that I define it very clearly is that there's masculine qualities and feminine qualities and both men and women have both obviously living within them. You know, my work is really about um, focusing on the masculine qualities and actually focusing on the healthy versions of them and how to actually let's talk about them. that what is the masculine quality and what is the healthy version of the masculine quality well i mean if you just look at the world you know and again both men and women this is this is why it's really important this is why i have zero pushback in my work you know because we have both qualities you know there are women in the world who are super healthy masculine there are women in the world who are, have super unhealthy masculine mm -hmm. and there are men in the world who have very strong feminine and, and very negative you know so so you have to segregate for a moment the physicality of one's body from the qualities that we're talking about and when you're talking about just a masculine quality what is healthy and unhealthy masculine? And then well, when well, I'm going to talk well, about off, healthy you have, and healthy feminine. Well, you have to talk just about the, what the qualities are. Like what, yeah. what, do, men, what do men do? What, is, what does the masculine do? Masculine is a creative quality, um, but it's a creative quality in terms of very much a outwardly pushing forward, you know, yeah. quality. Um, it's, it's, you know, the energy of the masculine is kind of creating one's own destiny, you know, much more of the push where a feminine energy or quality would be much more of a surrender they're both yeah. good nothing's better than the other and this is where it gets touchy because people exactly well, yeah. exactly so it's not about that we have to be able to you know just take yeah. any emotional you know or any you know attachment we have to words away from it you know if you look at what the masculine quality does just from the birth standpoint you know and how a baby is born there's a difference between the function of the feminine and the function of the masculine right so you know they're both creative but the masculine tends to be very direct, you know, mm -hmm. very focused on kind of creating worlds, you know. And women forward. like that. Women like that. Well, it's not about women, but the feminine likes that. You feminine know, likes it, that, yes. You know, so Femin the feminine, women. yeah. Exactly. I mean, the feminine quality, you know, will be, you know, the feminine quality is more foundational in a lot of sense because it's more of a surrendered state of bliss, a surrendered state of creation. Which is power. That, women needs to, we, we need to know that surrender doesn't mean you're weak, that you let go, that you let go of your sure. power. Surrender actually means you surrender and you you expand. Of course. Yeah, and exactly. men love that too, because to them, see, some women think it's, it's I'm losing my power, I'm, I'm, I'm giving in. No, you're not. When you completely surrender, 
men are attracted to it because to them that's power that they're it's an unknown it's it's total unknown to them and it's a magical and 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 it's super attractive mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's yeah. magnetism there's polarity and mm -hmm. the difference between feminine and masculine and i think that's a good thing you know that's the way that the world works <clears throat> you know like i think it would be a disservice not to really understand the difference between the feminine and the masculine it's like not understanding or recognizing the difference between night and day you know or light you know and darkness like we are living yeah. in a world of duality and polarities masculine and feminine is one you just had two babies i have one what creates that the combination the marriage you know between the masculine and the feminine creates life right so this is one way that we can see it so what we do in our work is just look at the masculine qualities and say all right, like what are those? And admitting like that those qualities mm -hmm. can go array, they can go off into negative. Mm -hmm. They have, you know, in our current world, you know, the need for power, the need for dominance, the need for aggression, right, 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 you right. know, like can and be this the mess. This is what this is what women are not liking that 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 extreme that extreme the the domination. You know, the one one because I I do believe masculine has the power to dominate okay it's 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 something that feminine doesn't quite have and woman can do women can do that if they're in the masculine right some people are not going to like that because some people will say women may say yeah but i i can be so strategic i can be so analytical and direct and push pushing forward and it's me it's a woman you know so that's it's it's very you know sensitive to say that that's a masculine within you how do we know where's the where's the science that can tell you that well we can talk about it theoretically, Carl Jung, right? Talking about masculine and feminine and, and, and where, where does this come? How, how do you know for sure, for sure? If, if it, it's not a hardcore science, right? How do you know for sure that that's, that is the masculine? It's just, it's it, yeah, You know, like you have to become self-aware to understand, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with talking about these qualities. It's ridiculous to me that this has to be taken off the table in any conversation because it's the reality of how we yeah. live you look you walk around the world you see men and women you know and and within that there's qualities that represent you know um you know these different kind of genders you know and we it's okay to talk about it and okay yeah. like what's what's not okay about that you know it's like yeah, let's talk about it you know and there is masculine and there is feminine yeah sure. so let's talk about energy. like all right like what does that mean you know and it's not hard and true, like you have to look within yourself. I mean, all I do is I prompt the question, you know, there's no answers. I think that the the goal of anyone that's out there teaching something is to prompt inquiry and to ask questions that has you thinking about it. And what I found with, with my guys is when I just say some simple things, it's like, yeah, like what is that energy in me that does want to dominate something or does want to be aggressive or does have a low, a high level of frustration or wants to check out and watch porn mm -hmm. or drink or, you know, do drugs or whatever, or cheat, you know, or mm -hmm. whatever these things, you know, that are kind of like diseases in our culture, you know, in terms of behavior. And so like really understanding that energy and then understanding how to take that energy and not react to it or let it have its way, but actually learn how to harness it, you know, and, and the way that we do it is we harness it in a way that is connected with a higher vision for one's life. So every guy that I talk to yeah. has a dream. They have a future that would be great for them. You know, it could be work-wise, it could be money-related, it could be relationship-related, it could be health, fitness-related. They have goals, they have dreams, okay? This is what men do. We have yeah. dreams, we have visions, we have goals. We wanna go and achieve them. That's a very masculine quality. And so what I do is I say, hey, look, let's just forget about whatever negativity you got going on right now for a moment. Let's first start with, what is it that gets you excited? What is it about this future? <clears throat> that could be really mind blowing for you because let me tell you a little secret. Your life, as seriously as you take everything that's going on, your health, your job, your work, it's all meaningless in a sense. And they say, well, how can that be? I said, well, let me ask you a question. Think about your great, 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 great grandparents. Okay, five greats ago. And everyone's just sitting there. I'm like, does anyone know who they were? And no one knows who their you know, great, great, great grandparents were, right? Mm -hmm. I said, well, let me tell you a little secret about these people. Because they lived on this planet probably in the 1800s you know, or 1700s even. And they had their lives and they had their money issues and they had their relationship challenges and they had their career stuff and they had their desires and their needs and their health issues. And they got sick and they eventually died. And you know what? That was their life. And we'd have no idea who they were or what they were. We are remnants of them. Their DNA mm -hmm. passed along to us. And we have to remember that we are in the same process. And what that does is that awareness hopefully gives spaciousness 
to everyone that's living to say, all right, well, who am I? You know, like, who am I now? And what can I do in this life that is worth, worth living for? You know, because I think we're stuck in a prison of expectation and attachment to things that don't make us really happy. So at the core of our work with men is like, it's about attaining freedom, freedom of mind, freedom of heart. Just say, you know what? This life is short. Freaking go for it. Do things that you love. Make people happy. You know, like go out there and do the things that you really need to do and be unabashed around it, okay? Yeah. And so that, that's been the driving force of our work together is this notion of freedom, but then learning how to use these qualities of masculinity, like this creativity, this like, let's go out and change the world. Because I actually mm -hmm. refute what the Dalai Lama said. I actually think that men, healthy versions of men or healthy versions of masculinity mm -hmm. coming together could actually change the world very quickly, you know, very quickly, you know, because that's the nature, like men move fast, yeah. you know, and if yeah. you get a million men, 5 million men, 10 million men coming together in a new form of consciousness and awareness and saying, all right, how do we now tell a new narrative around the world? Not that women can't do that or the feminine can't do it. It can and is doing it. But if you get a group of men that are doing that, that could be very powerful. That could instigate a massive shift in everything, you know, like really, really fast, just because we are good that way. We can create systems and structures really well. And totally that agree with that. Totally. That isn't totally. a slight actually, to anybody. And that isn't a slight to anybody. And I, I have no problem saying that because yeah. I, I believe it. So I, I totally understand uh, what you're saying, especially about systems and structures. I have a, for, a masculine in me, I, I'm aware of that. And I know that when I think of systems and structures and strategies, I know it comes from my inner masculine. I totally know it. And and there are times I'm like, wow, this is so cool to be a man. You know, there, there are times mm. I think that way. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I can think faster. I can think forward. I can yep. create visions. I just know it comes from this really, this, this, this drive, this like forward thinking, you know, mm -hmm. whereas feminine, it's not less. That's the whole point. Feminine is not less than the masculine. And that's been a mistake among women to think that way, that you have to be masculine, that you have to be manly. It is really about a combination, but especially in the relationship with a man, it is important for a woman to really embrace her feminine. And it's so incredibly powerful. And it's, it feels really good to be in the feminine energy. It's, it's something that women forget and that it, it, it is our secret. It is our magic. And with it, we can collaborate with men. With it, we can actually have a man see us in a different way and want to work with us and want to collaborate with us to change the world, as opposed to pushing them aside and saying, you've done so many bad things. It's our turn. It's our way. But it is important to work together, you know, with, with those incredible but different energies in, in within ourselves too, you know, with my masculine, with my feminine, um, at different times and, um, and really recognize, pay attention to both energies and know that one of them is not less or worse or, 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 or better for any reason or higher, you know, or more, more um, you know, developed or, in, in, or anything like that. It is the yin and yang, right? It is about the, it's just, they're so, so, so different. Yeah. So different. Yeah. So unhealthy form of masculine, you said, you know, this the, 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 the domination or the in the in this book they talk about being a tyrant or you know this overly dominating kind of persona. Um what is the unhealthy form of, of feminine in your in your opinion? You know, again, I'm not probably the best person to talk to about that. You sure, know, sure. But 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 for, from your from your perspective i'm just curious as because i can say what it is in a, in, a, in a man right from a woman perspective what about you from a male perspective feminine not 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 the masculine with the no name. sure yeah i'm just i'm just trying to think um you know what i would say that would be um you know i, I would say not really being connected with the power of what that feminine qualities, what those feminine qualities really are and understanding the power of the surrendered state, like the, you know, the, yeah. the it's, it's almost like to me, this is where the creation happens. And, and physically speaking, this is where life is, is formed. Like you had, you know, babies growing in your body, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. we can't do that. Uh, you know, we, we, we don't have the ability to do that, you know, and I think there's something very foundational around that. It's almost like, 
the power of life itself mm -hmm. is connected with a healthy feminine. Um, you know, and, and I think that maybe women forgetting that yeah. ultimate power, you know, is kind of where things can go off. And I think what can often happen is the reaction to masculinity or an unhealthy masculine being aggressive mm -hmm. and dominant and not really understanding how to deal with that and combat it can create narratives around victimization, you know, around right. powerlessness. And there's just a lot of sensitivity that we all have to that because- Well, that's the unhealthy form of what you're talking about, the powerlessness and victimization. That's sort of the unhealthy form. The, that's the, what you just asked me though. Yeah, you yeah, that's exactly, that, that's exactly what I'm agreeing with you. Yes, right. I'm agreeing. That is the unhealthy form, you're, you're right. Mm -hmm. and, and also I would even add that the, unhealthy form could be because women are very good with community right community developing relationships um staying present the unhealthy form would, would be you know community communicating talking and the gossip could be the other spectrum of it you know like the the over the, the, the talking and you know desperate housewives type Sure. Yeah. Sense. So that, that I, I personally think that could be the, the unhealthy form where it's just become becomes about nothing. It's not about achievement. It's not about fulfilling yourself. It is just about, you know, taking advantage of people or even men, you know, in a sense that that, that, that could be the unhealthy form of feminine and also seduction. I think like the seduction where women have certain kind of power, you know, they know what men want. Um, and so that could be another form of overusing the feminine in a negative way mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah so this is all very interesting your system um it's all online or do you also do in person because i know uh, you developed it just recently right i haven't i haven't yeah i mean so i haven't been doing in person programs because we've been in a pandemic yeah. um so i do uh the way the way that i do my my programs is i do a um a challenge i do an online digital challenge you know which is either a three day or a six day challenge. And it's, you know, I use the archetypes, you know, very much. So I have a warrior activated. That's the first yeah. introduction that men have into my work. It's a six day or three day challenge where I run men through a process uh, that changes their perspective about who they are as a man in this world, without a doubt, you know, and it's a very, very vetted system that I've kind of used for years, but I've condensed mm -hmm. it and solidified it into a matrix of ideas and exercises. So it's very action oriented. So guys come in and it's not like I just get up there and I talk, you know, it's more of like, Hey, we're going to do this today. And you're going to yeah. practice this in your life. I call it an in the moment training. And then tomorrow we're going to come back as a community of men. And we're going to like talk about that practice. And we're going to add in this one. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and do this. And so it's a very, very detailed um, boot camp for the mind boot camp for the heart where guys kind of come in and they're like, either dealing with isolation, they're dealing with stress, they're dealing with mediocrity, or mm -hmm. a lot of guys come in and they're like, they, they know what they want to do. They're ready to kind of create that next project. They want to make their side hustle, their main hustle. They got this book they want to write. They got this they want to do. And they want, this is a springboard. That's also a, re a very good place to come into something like this. And what happens in those six days is very, it's like very clear, okay? Like what mm -hmm. actually happens. And then from there, uh, a lot of the men will stay on board and go out, go ahead and create a community that are going to go out and create projects in the world together. Mm. Because what we need to That's relearn great. as men is how to go out and really support each other. And what we do very well in certain circumstances is hold each other accountable, but in normal day-to-day -day lives, if we have families or we have jobs and like, we actually get very isolated. It's what I call the lone wolf syndrome. It's a disease, mm -hmm. you know, we're isolated. And so we need yeah. to be able to connect with other guys and actually hold each other accountable yeah. around the projects that we're doing in the world. And I make guys choose projects, you know, and a lot of the projects could be, you know, guys know what they want to do. It's like, they got that side hustle. So then they, they want to write that book. So in, in a month or six weeks, they're going to do this. A lot of the guys don't know when they come in what that project is, but I, I make them choose one. And it's got, you know, a lot of the guys could be something domestic. It could be something around the house, you know, it's like, all right, I got to clean up that attic. I haven't done that in years. I, you know, so just taking clean up the room, like George Peters, George yeah, Peters. It, it could be anything, yeah. you know, but I make them choose something that's relevant for them that actually is going to cause some friction. Like it's not just going to be the easiest thing to do. And I make them get clear about what the goal is for that, you know, period of time. And then I say, okay, now we're going to continue this process and you're going to connect with 
two or three other guys in a small triad or quad, and you're going to actually hold each other accountable as you do this. So it's kind of really bringing back. There's a lot of production that is happening, a lot of creativity in production and forward movement, right? Because you it's actually it's need okay. something. It's, yeah, and it's, it's always what's worked for us as men. Like, again, like yeah. that, it's like, it's timeless. You know, it's always what, you know, if you look at history, you know, so you're our, reactivating, you're truly reactivating the world. Yeah, in, our, his, the in our in our history, we have endless examples in every culture around the world of men coming together and hosting rites of passage that are helping a brother go from one place to another. Mm-hmm. Okay, that that is very masculine, you know, and women are great at community. Yeah, we're great at short, intense bursts of transformation that happen in groups. That's what we do. That's, that's very masculine. It's very different. Um, and so we really rehash that. So we're, we're and, and it's for normal people, you know, cause like, yeah, if you're a professional athlete, you're already on a team and you're already working towards that championship and that's fine. If you're in the military, you already got your brothers and your group and you're working towards something. I have a lot of military guys, you know, that come into my programs, yeah. you know, cause they miss it. Or, or if you're in a church, you know, like that, can, you know, church has men's groups, you know, and they're not, the most functioning things, but a lot of those guys will come in and say, man, I need something like this because I really resonate with that. And so that's yeah. the messaging, you know, that we put out there is that there's something very special that can happen when a community of men come together to support one another. And my that's husband the- did that. My husband did some, something similar called Mankind Project. You probably yes, know. Yes, of this. course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He did the, he did that. For, yeah, uh, no. They have their warrior weekend. Yep. Amazing. He loved it. And he's, um, he was, he was the one who introduced me to the woman within the sister project. Mm-hmm. I did the woman within weekend project. After that, I did a wholeness weekend where we went through six different archetypes and then I did skills workshop and, you know, they, they do a lot of free circles. It's Amazing really incredible. Work. Yeah. So oh, you've done, have you done mankind project? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, so you, and what you're doing now is really, really incredible. The warrior activation. I love the the idea of reactivating, how you call it, the activating, right? You call, you call that worry activation, correct? Yes, yes. So it's a, in a sense, you're reactivating something that is in men, that is there, that is maybe dormant in some men, maybe because of where the culture is and what's been going on. And I think Jordan Pearson is, has been doing something similar, help, helping men, mm-hmm. even though, again, another topic that is you know so sensitive. Some people pro-Jordan, some people anti-Jordan. Some people can be both, you know, like the recent rebel wisdom he had uh, jonathan ross and he, he had a great talk about jordan pearson called jordan pertussonitis where they talk about the ability to like jordan peterson and also criticize him so this is kind of where i personally am i, I admire him so much and in the and yes we understand there may be some missing missing points and it's incredible what he has been doing and what you're doing very similarly is to really reminding men of their power and it's with some traditional values which are so important and and honestly women love it they crave for it they want it they they want a man to be in the masculine energy mm-hmm. this is when you truly begin truly ad- appreciate your your feminine and mm-hmm. in relationships this is where it really plays out in relationships and there's so many women who are single these days i work with them women who are in their 30s 40s that don't have the families or children only because they have been well mainly they have been so much in the in the in either masculine or resenting the masculine or trying to be um you know as powerful as men and really neglecting their feminine it is really at the end of the day they have been neglecting their feminine and and this is also really really important great work for for women to do and i really admire what you're doing i really appreciate that you're speaking confidently about these issues even though some people would criticize or or you know like anyone that does anything in this world is going to get criticized you know it's just i mean you know i don't really care so much i mean you know we can only all do our best of what we do you know and believe in what we're doing you know there's really no room for self-doubt you know when you're exactly. doing something that you believe in i know that the people that come through my work i uh-huh. i I see the transformation that happens over Give me the and example. over again. So that the audience understands. Oh, it's, in, it's, some... it's, it's, it, it, it's insane. You know, I mean, I had a guy last week, you know, come to California and he kind of very timidly texted me, you know, he was in my program maybe in June or July. And, you know, I had no idea, you know, his, his name is Scotty G and uh, he was kind of timid to text me, but I was happy to go get a co- coffee with him. And he basically told me, he's like, look, man, like, 
I was, I was at the end of my rope, you know, he's a 47 year old guy was really successful, but was going through a really hard divorce. His wife was making it difficult to see his kid. The pandemic hit, like lost his business basically. And he was just didn't know what to do with himself. And he found our work online and, you know, I mean, literally he came in through my whole curriculum and his life completely transformed to the point where he now has an amicable relationship with his ex-wife. He sees his daughter every day. He transitioned his business into something that is more profitable and more joyful than it even was before. And he basically sat there like just thanking me, you know, for two hours. I'm like, look, I didn't do anything. All, all mm-hmm. I did was prompt you to ask yourself some questions yeah. and you did the work, you know? And then I had another guy, um, <clears throat> This one I love, you know, he was also somebody that had just gotten divorced. And one of the things that I do in my programs is I, I ask men to get very specific around the things that they want to have happen in their future, like more specific than they ever would. Mm. Like, like I haven't write it out, you know, and, and, you know, the things like very like precision, what they want. So this brother, uh, you know, he wanted, you know, a new relationship, you know, and, and so he took my advice and he's like, all right, well, I want a woman who's also recently divorced in the last year. She has two kids. Her name is Melissa, but she goes by Missy. She's going through her own stuff, but she's looking for a partner and a friendship. She does work in the nonprofit world, like whatever. He got really specific about what he mm-hmm. wanted to create. So six months later, he calls me up. He's like, Todd, I got to speak to you. So we get on the phone. I recorded it, you know, mm-hmm. and he basically said, he's like, well, I got to tell you, like, you know, he, and he rehashed what he had written, you know, in that mm-hmm. six, six, in this five-year plan. And he's like, so about three weeks ago, I meet this woman. Her name is Melissa. She goes by Missy. She got two kids around my kid's age. Like she's looking for a relationship, but she's got to take it slow. She works a nonprofit and da 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 da. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's like, he's like, it's like exact. So that's that's a very that's uh, great. and there's a lot of lot of stories like that. I mean, you, you create know, what, a script. <clears throat> it's 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 you, you actually actually. It's not that. Script, what, what, what actually happens? It's not always that direct, but that was a good example. Uh-huh. Oftentimes, it is direct. But really what it is, is you're tapping into magic, you know, and there's a a magic part to this that most people have forgotten about or never rehashed like that. We we actually have a lot more power to create circumstances and situations in our lives than we, than we know. And so when our programs, we actually give the brothers the freedom to feel that power Mm -hmm. again, and then the things start happening and they're almost like in awe of it, but it's actually just a part of you know, being human that we've just kind of dismissed in our modern world. So we're just bringing that back. And I have countless examples of things like that where guys, that's why my retention rate, when I'm doing another challenge this week, I will have 50 guys that have done it before do it again because they want to feel it again. You know, they want to feel that again. Let so, me ask you this one question. And, um, and just so you know, I, yeah. I actually have to go shortly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. An hour one, okay. yeah one, one short uh, question. Um, for a woman, when a woman is speaking with a masculine empowered man, right? For a woman, if she has something really incredible, interesting to say, and how, what does she need to do to be heard by a man I mean, in I a relationship just, or in general? Hmm? I think it's just always about being authentic. You know, I, I, I mean, it's, you know, I don't want to sit here and generalize like why somebody would feel that they're not being heard. I mean, you know, it's mm-hmm. very hard to grossly generalize because everyone has different relationships. Yeah. There may be people that you always feel heard by, maybe people, some, some that you never feel heard by, you know, I mean, all we can do, you know, is our best, you know, an experiment with how to communicate something to somebody, you know, so maybe sometimes it's like changing the way you do it, you know, and sitting down with them and trying to meet them where they're at, you know, and talking to them in a way that they right. can actually hear you. You know, and that's, that's a way of putting out the olive branch and saying, all right, like I'm trying here, you know, like, I'm going to try to express something to you in a way that you can hear it. And that often works, you know? So I think a lot of it is just getting out of our our own way and like the way that we need the world to be, we need others to be, that's the suffering. We can never change somebody else. We can only do the work internally to try to reach, you know, someone else in a way that we will. And, and, and exactly. that takes practice. Do the work internally. Yes. Yeah. Men do practice. work internally. Women do their work internally. And, yeah. and then meeting, meeting in the middle where we hear each other. I appreciate your coming onto this podcast with another woman, hearing her. And I enjoyed listening and hearing you sharing all the insight. We're going to put all the links below um, so that uh, people can find more about your courses and the worry activation. And again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Elena. I really appreciate you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Once-